Hello, Planeswalkers! Tyler here. And Andrew. And today we're going to be bringing you another episode of Commander Countdowns. This time, taking a look at our top five favorite green commanders. Now, when we say green, we're looking at strictly mono green. So anything whose color identity has no other colors other than green. And remember, these lists are purely subjective. These are our favorite green creatures to build with. They may not be the best, they may not be the strongest, but we have fun with them. Make sure to tell us your favorite green commanders down in the comment section below. And without further ado, let's get on to the list. Starting off at number 5, I've got Galta, Primal Hunger. A 12-12 Elder Dinosaur who casts for a whopping 10 green green and has trample, Galta also costs X less to cast, where X is the total power among creatures you control. Galta represents how I love to play Commander down to the very bone. Big flashy creature, threatening keywords, big numbers, and the fact that she's a dinosaur really doesn't hurt. She represents the high end of the food chain of massive stompy green creatures, with every summoned beast acting as her herald as they continue to drop her casting costs lower and lower. On top of that, she can even get around commander tax, assuming you've got enough big creatures out there to help her casting costs drop even lower. At the end of the day, Galta is just a big snappy girl who wants to party over and over and over again. Coming in at my number five pick is Azusa, Lost But Seeking. She is a one two human monk for two and a green that lets you play an additional land on each of your turns. Combining her with cards that add lands to your hand, she ramps like a mother <laughs> She generates a lot of mana advantage, enabling you to drop some enormous threats much earlier than your opponents. Here's my number four pick, Freilies. She's an elf planeswalker with three loyalty that costs three green green and she spits out Lana War Elves as a plus two ability. She's one of those planeswalkers that can be played as your commander. After just two rounds, she can activate her minus six ability and draw you a card for each creature you control. This is a go wide strategy, so you know I'm gonna love it. Play a bunch of small mana dorks and some huge heavy hitters, draw a ton of cards, generate tons of mana, and play all your big creatures to overwhelm your opponents. I'm sensing a theme here. Oh, what are they coming? Huh. Well, this is, uh, awkward. Taking my number four spot is, uh, Freilies, Land of War's Fury. She's, well, three green green for a three loyalty planeswalker with plus two, make a Land of War Elves, uh, minus two, naturalize, and minus six, draw a card for each green creature you control. Thank you, Andrew. Due to my love of Tolkien mythos, elves have a very special place in my heart, and while I know there are plenty of green elf commanders out there, I picked Freilies as my favorite for a few reasons. She's simple, she doesn't necessarily need to be elf tribal, but they can still helm things pretty well, and uh, personally, I'm kind of a sucker for the short hair and eye patch. Don't judge me. For real though, I used to run a mono green elf deck that had Freilies at the helm, and with her ability to just plop out literal mana ramp and then deal with any of the numerous artifacts and enchantments running wild through the commander format, the deck was loads of fun to play. Keeping a not so silent vigil over my number three slot is Gargos, Vicious Watcher. He's an 8-7 Hydra with Vigilance that costs 3 green 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 and has Hydra spells you cast cost 4 less to cast, as well as whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, Gargos fights up to one target creature you don't control. Coming back around to my love of tribal builds, Gargos heads, ah, heads. one of my favorites, the Hydras. His ability to make them 4 cheaper is insane as many Hydras have X in their casting cost, allowing you to pay what you can to pump them up as beefy as possible. Gargos is just here to make sure that happens at a more efficient rate. On top of that, his second ability is nothing to scoff at either. Notice anything particular about the wording? It doesn't say the spell that's targeting your creatures has to be controlled by an opponent. 
If you target your own stuff, say with a pump spell or maybe something that gives indestructible, Gargos goes in full offensive mode and starts picking schoolyard fights with anyone within his radius. Coming in at my number 3 slot is the elemental that keeps on coming back with more and more colors for no discernible reason. Boy, just standing in a river doesn't give you blue mana. But this time we're looking at his first form where he's mono green. This is Omnath, Locus of Mana. He's a 1-1 elemental for 2 and a green. This commander actually incentivizes you to hold on to the mana that you generate, at least once you have Omnath out, and hopefully a way to get him trampled. I'd first like to to play an absolute ton of mana rocks, as well as green mana generating cards like Nissa who shakes the world, when then giving Omnath trample, filling your mana pool, and then swinging for lethal with commander damage. I'm pretty sure your pool being green isn't normal, but Omnath disagrees. Boy, that's algae in your water! My number 2 pick is Azuri. He's a 2-2 elf for 1 green green that can regenerate your elves for 1 green and give them plus 3 plus 3 and trample for the turn for 2 green green green. Did I mention I love going wide? Cause I love going wide. Boy he loves going wide. Throw out tons of elves, just an entire city's worth of elves. An army of Orlando Blooms and Evangeline Lilies to pump up and trample over your foes. Bounding up the garden path both into our hearts and into the number two spot is the multiverse's goodest boy, Mowu, loyal companion. This pupper is a beefy 3-3 for four and a green with both trample and vigilance, and has, if one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on Mowu, put that many counters plus one instead. This pippy pup is so good that he deserves all the counters, which in this case I'm going to interpret as treats, because Mowu deserves all of them, yes he does. Past his adorable fluffy exterior though lies a hellish beast capable of untold destruction if his allies are in danger, so be sure to load him up with plenty of counters and tummy rubs, and leave your opponents going, Mowu, what's this? And finally, taking her rightful spot at number one, it's Her Majesty, Ayula. Queen among bears. My queen. A 2 2 bear for one in a green, Ayula is truly a bear tribal commander, boasting the ability to, when another bear enters the battlefield under your control, either bestow two plus one plus one counters upon target bear, or allow target bear to fight another creature. In addition to large, scaly creatures and tribal builds, one of my favorite aspects of commander is finding homes for bad cards. Enter Grizzly Bears, a 2-2 for one and a green with no abilities, and all of its functional reprints. Ayula breathes new life into these traditionally bad cards, and makes them a force to be reckoned with. Suiting her up with equipment, then letting her go ham on your opponent's creatures is, I assure you, the greatest feeling in the world, as you exercise your right to arm bears. My number one pick is everyone's favorite, least favorite party member, Gisan the Bard. He's a 2-3 human rogue for 2 and a green that has a weird ability. You pay 2 and a green and tap him to put a verse counter on him, and then you search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of verse counters on Yisan, and put it onto the battlefield. Suit up Yisan with plenty of protective equipment and enchantments, and maybe throw in a couple of sacrifice outlets to sacrifice Yisan to start his verse counters over again, and repeatedly spit out creatures from your deck for cheap. If you run some Eldrazi, you can get Yisan up to 10 verse counters and spit out the Eldrazi for 3 mana. Even though this deck doesn't go wide, it does go tall, and is just weird enough for me to want to find a way to make it work. Plus, you can't go wrong with the Bard. And that, Planeswalkers, is our personal top five favorite green commanders. What are yours? Were there any on the list? Were there any that you wished weren't on the list? Be sure to let us know down in the comments below. We look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep some mana open, keep casting, and we'll see you on the battlefield. Later!